If this isn't a perfect example of why Dimension Shifter needs to be banned, similar to how Maxi was banned, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you, Sugar Boo Bear. Let's dive on into it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain. Ooh, that sounded like a stanky one off that like and subscribe button. So we climb even higher, the 1400 liar, and eventually hit our goal of 2,000 subscribers. That would be quite the day. You guys, I wanted to talk about balanced implications, specifically Dimension Shifter. We all know what this card does, and... Of course, your boys testing Tempai Dragons. I saw that Jesse Cotton posted a Dragon Link build of the deck, which I had been messing around with it and done like some 60 card shenanigans stuff. Um, but I've been leaning more into like Dragon Link Tempai engine stuff, right? The problem with specifically the Dragon Link build of Tempai Dragon is that it folds like a house of cards to Dimension Shifter. And You've heard me talk about our homie Valley D on the channel before. He's like a brother from another mother. I wanted to talk about this conversation that I've pulled up here on Discord because I feel like, at least in my opinion, it goes to show how toxic and how game warping of a card dimension shifter is in the TCG meta, similarly compared to Max C, right? Because the TCG is very combo heavy. Max C, you could draw 10 plus cards. It's insane. Um, and I feel that Dimension Shifter really fills that gap, so to speak, that Max C had filled for years until it was finally banned. So me and uh, Valley are having this conversation on Discord, and I was talking to him about how I feel that the Cash Tira build of Tempai Dragon is better than the Dragon Link version because of the fact it can be a little bit more susceptible uh, to deal, or rather it can ease more easily deal with Dimension Shifter, if I could get my words out of my mouth today, pause, um, I felt that the Cash Tira build was just better because the fact it could deal with Shifter better. Um, you know, if you go against Flu, you're going to die to Shifter. Um, if you play against Rescue Ace and they're playing Shifter, you're going to die to Shifter. If you go against the Tempai Mirror and it's just straight Tempai, which can play Dimension Shifter and still OTK, you're going to die to Shifter. So I said uh, the Cash Tira build can possibly make it work. Talking about um, Shifter. And I said I got to do more testing because I know a pure build can still OTK under it. Um, as you saw in the first hand, and I was talking about when we were playtesting, and he says, uh, I don't think you should really care about Shifter. I'm like, why? It ends my turn. And our homie Valley D says, uh, the decks that play Shifter, you're favored against regardless. You spend so much time worrying about edge cases, which, I mean, I have dog water luck in this game, uh, so do keep that in mind. Uh, there's no shifter decks that are relevant in the format or will be relevant. Like, why let shifter dictate a deck building decision? Because it's shifter. A 33% chance to draw shifter in a rogue matchup means you'll play it in, means you'll play a worse version of a deck. Like, it doesn't make sense. Which, uh, to, to his regard, you're right. It doesn't make sense. And, like, for anyone who's going to be like, oh, he's, you know, being a dick to you, Avery, like, no, we've been friends for like over a decade. We have a brotherly relationship here. We bust each other's balls all the time. It's actually a really fun time, which when, if slash when I end up going to YCS Indy, you're going to be seeing a lot of vlogs with us. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a great time. We're going to be busting each other's balls that whole trip. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, but this is why I play the game the way that I do. It's because of the fact that cards like Shifter and Maxi by extension, when we had Maxi, are such god cards that even though you only have a 33% chance to open up Dimension Shifter, the fact that you have access to that, and you're someone like me who, I for years, I've had dog water luck in this game, you have to worry about those things. Like, that's why I love decks like Centurion, not just because the fact that I got 10th place at a regional, could have got top four if I hadn't just shotgun the Crimson Dragon and lost to an Imperm. Um, but that's why I love decks like that that are very mid-range or very control heavy where they don't just die to Shifter. They don't just die to Droll and they can play like 15 hand traps. That's what makes decks in Yu-Gi-Oh very good. You know, when you watch people do these tier list videos and they say, oh, this is tier one, this is Rogue, this is Table 500, like, or in our case, we say the Booty Booty Butt Cheek category. It's because of the fact that not every single deck in the game can play 15 non-engine slots being hand traps. It's because not every deck in the game doesn't 
auto die to a shifter or to a droll. Like if you play Dark World, what are the two main cards that you worry about? Shifter and droll. Whether, like, unless you're in a format where either Droll and or Shifter are banned, or they're just not seeing any play at all in 99% of decks for whatever reason, then yeah, Dark World's going to be a good meta call. But when you're in a format like Snake Eye Tier 0, who knows what it'll be once we get Legacy of Destruction, or hopefully a ban list, but... When you're in formats like this, granted they will change over time as meta calls get changed, you have to worry about the here and now when trying to test like OCG meta decks, right? Like in the case of Tenpai Dragon, technically it's still OCG because we don't have Legacy of Destruction yet, and we don't have a ban list that has banned Shifter or whatever. So you want to be able to build your deck to play through the opponent's interruptions as best you can, especially when you know people are going to be playing interruptions that stop the Snake Eye deck because Snake Eye is fucking tier zero. Like Snake Eye folds to Shifter. They can maybe build some kind of board under Shifter or build some kind of board under Droll. But just because they can still build a board doesn't mean that you're not going to play those decks. Now, in, in regards to Shifter specifically and what decks it's played in, in the current format, yes, the only decks that really play Shifter are maybe a pure Sprite variant, which even then Sprite's kind of fallen off the map because you're better off just playing Runic Stun as a meta call because Snake Eyes Tier 0. Um, maybe Rescue Ace. I've seen some Rescue Ace variants play Shifter. Some don't. It depends on the build. Um, Flunder, of course, plays Shifter. Cash Tira plays Shifter, which some would argue that Cash Tira is Rogue. I would say it's more like Tier 2. But it's the fact that if you're hit by these cards, you just lose the game. Even if you have a good matchup, so to speak, against said deck, if you get hit with a shifter, you're still going to lose. And I don't like these decks that even though, it, by, by leaps and bounds, even though that the Dragon Link engine I see firsthand is better than the Cash Tira engine, because Boreline Dragon is uh, it's an Egyptian god card, like it's fucking broken. <laughs> um, even though you have that access to it, the fact that you just cannot play under Shifter is a huge issue. Like technically, depending on how you open, you could do Heavenly Spheres Pass. But is that going to be enough to win you the ball game, whether you're under Shifter or not? And I feel that the answer is no. Like, I've been seeing a lot of posts on the Tempai Dragon Facebook page, which has a lot of like really smart players in there. But the issue that a lot of those players are talking about is like, you go with either Boguska Pass <laughs> or you go with Spears Pass. Neither of those things are enough in Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2024. And even though there are some lines, you have to play like two bricks, but you could make King Calamity going first, playing Tempai Dragon. You make the King Calamity on the opponent's turn and you just win the ball game most likely. But there are better engines because of the fact that Kashtira, you can end on Zelantis and like a Zongdora without any other extenders. Dragon Link, you end on a Boralin without any other extenders. With other extenders, you can end on like Dispatter, Savage Dragon with like three Boral counters if you get Triple Burst Dragon in the grave. And then a Boralin. Like, that's insane. That's a really good board in 2024. Especially since like even Snake Eyes outside of Zelantis can't out the Boral end like it's actually really funny so as much as I want to play the dragon link cards there's always that monster in the corner of the room being dimension shifter that you have to think about like okay I'm playing three talents and a call by the only thing that outs the shifter in that regard is call by the grave and I'm not going to play cross out for shifter because then you're just adding inconsistent crap to your deck when you want to keep your deck at 40 cards so it's like, what do you do, right? Because you're in a situation where, unless like you just change completely the deck that you're deciding to play, you got to worry about the shifter taking a crap on your board and like you just lose because of it, unless like your opponent bricks, but that's semantics. If shifter is banned, you completely take that equation out and you just chuck it out the window and make it go touch grass. Because Shifter inherently is bad card design. I don't care what anybody says. Like, there are people who, th to this day, will defend shit like Mystic Mind and say that it's good card design when it's not. It's inherently bad card design because it just stalls out the game. Shifter may as well say, you win the game if you play this against your opponent. Because, like, what decks don't die to Shifter right now? Pre-Legacy of Destruction format. Flu, Race, 
maybe Snake Eyes, depending on what their other like main sub engine is, like Snake Eyes plus I don't know fucking Sprite. Like it just depends. And with the bad luck I have in this game. I prepare for as many situations as I possibly can. You can go back and look at like old deck profiles I've done on the channel. You know, my first ever regional invite, I squeezed in. Like I squeezed in as much as my skinny ass at the time could. I got 47th out of top 48 going X and three. And that was just because like tiebreakers. Uh, Necroz, tier zero. I played fucking tier zero Necroz. I went five and four. Like I could have been six and three, but I think I like fumbled the ball in the last round and like made some misplays earlier and whatever. And so like, I always have bad luck in this game. I don't know what it is. It's similar to like Robbie Cole talking about when he used to play gadgets back in the day. If you watch his old deck profiles, everybody would say play three of each gadget. He's like, no, nah, I play two of each because I'm always going to brick on him. It's the same way with me and just cards that will end my turn, whether it's shifter, summon limit, what have you. I'll tell you a quick story and I'll end the video. Back in tier zero dragon ruler format. And I blame my dad because he put this fucking curse on me. We roll up to Kissimmee, Florida for this regional. And my dad says, you know what would be funny is if you played against stun round one. I'm like, no one's going to be playing stun in tier zero format. If they do that, they're bad. Guess what happened round one? I played against a fucking stun deck. He summons out like Kaiku or Jaugen or something. Turn one. And this is in 2013. So we didn't really have all the hand traps we do now. He sets back room pass. And I got my asshole torn apart. Like two games in a row. Like just got smacked out of the venue. It was terrible. Then guess what happened? I draw to seven cards in hand because he popped my card trooper. You know what he activated? Which no one else was playing at the time. Heavy slump. If the opponent has seven or more cards in their hand, they ditch their entire hand and draw two. So he brought me down to a two card hand with a Jalgen on the board. I lost all my resources. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about having bad luck in this game. If anyone's going to go against the scrub runic stun player at locals round one, it's going to be me. Like it always happens. So guys, let me know what you think about this whole situation down in the comments below. Um, you know, don't be hating on my buddy. Like it's just... I think the conversation is more comical than anything because I do worry about edge cases. He's absolutely right, but I worry about these edge cases because my luck in this game is dog shit. If anyone were to lose in the finals of a YCS due to just heart of the cards on my opponent, it's going to be me. Like that's the whole reason why I'll probably never win a YCS because my opponent's just going to top deck and they just draw better than me. Like it's pretty toxic, but that's Yu-Gi-Oh for you.